so it was a year ago, uh, that your sister, Jo, was murdered in uh, her constituency. I mean, I can't even bring myself to describe what happened. Is it something that you play back in your mind or have you shut it off? Um, I think um, what happens is your brain kind of only allows what you are able to deal with at certain times. And I remember sort of over the summer literally feeling things being filed away and there's still an awful lot there that I haven't dealt with. And I know that I need to do that at some point. Um, but for now, I think we will get through the weekend and actually we'll end up having a, a very good weekend in lots of, in lots of ways because we'll be celebrating Joe's life. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that I still need to deal with. Do you feel that um, having to carry on and cope and campaign and fight for what everything that Joe believed in and worked hard for actually is a blessing in disguise. It, we're, we're doing this to create a positive legacy for Joe, but I also think it's a way of coping. I think if, every, well, if you've got something to focus on, you're not necessarily addressing the, the utter sadness and desperation that you feel. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a focus. Reading uh, Brendan's book about Jo, I was struck how close you and Jo were and how when she went to Cambridge, she phoned you every night when she was a student. Yeah, she did. And, and we didn't have mobile phones in those days, so yeah. keeping in touch was not as easy as it is now. But, but yeah, like Jo and I, when we were kids, we were really, really close. We were best mates. We did everything together, brownies and... My favourite you know. story is you two jumping into a barrel. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Down a hill and just rolling down the hill like <laughs> crazy mad kids. And we were. We had a brilliant childhood. But then when Jo went away to uni it was like we like lost our best friends so Jo was down there in this whole new world which for a, a normal northern working class girl was was pretty scary and I was up in Yorkshire thinking where's my best mate gone so it was hard it was a difficult time and we would speak late into the night about how much we missed each other but to be fair to Jo she did not give up and she wasn't going to be beaten by that. I, in the book it often talks about how great your parents were and what a great parent Jo was to her two wonderful children how how are they coping with all of this a year on? The kids are doing brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. They are utterly adorable. Clearly, I'm slightly biased, but they are, they are really lovely kids. Brendan has been absolutely outstanding in terms of scooping them up and continuing the work that the pair of them had started. And they're doing really well. And they're not just coping, they're thriving. You know, they're, they're doing extremely well. I managed to fly over across London last night and go and see them, which, which was really lovely, and put them to bed, which was nice. One of the things, hard, sorry, sorry <laughs> no, one of the things I found extraordinary in the book was that Brendan took them to see Joe's body. How old were they then? Three and five. Three and five. And, and we... They, yeah, they touched their dead mother's yeah, body. Yeah, and we deliberated over that, and it goes against every part of your being to yeah. think that cannot be the right thing to do. There is no way that can be the right thing to do. But actually, Brendan got a lot of advice from some eminent psychologists who, 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 who understand how, how, how these, these things work. And, and the advice was very much they need to do that because they won't understand. Because if mummy skips off to work one day and you never see her again, how can a child of three process yeah. that? How can they possibly understand that? And, and, and you know, and, and saying, oh, mummy's in another room, mummy's gone, you know, it's not true. Mummy's not coming back. And we have to be very clear about that with the children. But we were all, oh no, there's no way we can take them to see Joe. And actually it was the right thing to do. And even though there was an acute amount of upset, um, they actually then moved on much, much they better. They could process yeah. it a little bit yeah. easier. They, they understood, yeah. One of the most impressive things about how you've all behaved in the aftermath of something that I just, well, anybody would find truly appalling, was the way you've been so dignified towards the person that perpetrated the act. Do you feel anger? Have you parked the anger or have you gone past the anger? I don't actually know the answer to that. I don't know whether I will become angry at some point. I certainly haven't done so as of yet. Um, because what I think is, what would be the point? What would be the point in that? Because it will not change anything. We are where we are at. and and. It is the most horrific thing that could have happened in my life, but I cannot change it, and you have to accept that. So if I get angry, and if I fill myself full of self-pity and hatred, then the bad people win, and they're not going to win, and I will not be beaten by what's happened to us. It's the last thing Joe would want. Um, but I, how long that lasts, who knows? That might change, and I will have to deal with that, you know, if that anger comes. But, I'm, I, you know, I've got quite a lot of energy, but I'm not wasting one bit of it on being angry.